Hello and welcome to another Rover One video where I spend countless hours building an unpractical practical Jeep. Now in this video, we're going to drop the fuel tank and diagnose the fuel issue we're having. The fuel issue I'm having is I'm not getting power to the fuel pump. The fuel pump does work though because if you wire it directly from the battery to the fuel pump, it turns on fine. And I did drive this thing around once before it quit after I put the body back on. See what happened was it was running fine, I took the tub off, did some repairs on the frame in the tub, put it back together, drove it around and then it quit. So I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm reading that there are three wires that we have to be concerned about and I'm only seeing two. So I gotta drop the fuel tank so I can get a better look at what's happening. In my case this is a four liter swap YJ so I don't know what is stock and what isn't. Uh, and so this white wire is power and this black wire is that ground wire and the third wire I don't know where it is I don't know what it does it's somewhere up in there okay we got the thing out that took almost 10 minutes now there are some cables okay this one here goes to the tail light on this end and then there's one over here this one here that goes to the tail light on the driver's side. All right, so let's take a look here. This is the top of my fuel tank. And as you can see here, there are some wires coming out of it. There are two here, purple with yellow stripe, and looks like black. Both intact, I guess. If you follow them down, there's some shrink tubing there, and then it goes into the fuel pump. There's also a wire that goes here, and then a wire that goes here. I'm guessing this is ground. Both of those, brown and black big wires, come out into this connector. Right there, brown and black. There's another wire there that's cut, and if you look on the inside, there's no prong for it. If you look on the Jeep side, where that plugs into, it goes into here. There's a black with yellow stripe, a brown, or tan, and then an orange. And this must be the three wires people keep talking about. It goes up into this loom, which then, by the looks of it, goes up into the Jeep. So we have black with yellow stripe, that tan color, and then I'm not seeing an orange. That must be it there. So all of those wires are hooked up here, Next would be to follow this loom all the way to the front and see where it goes. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, where this thing plugs into, this one here with the purple and yellow wire and the black wire, as you can see there. That one there plugs into this one, which comes out a green wire and a black wire. The black wire is that ground you can see dangling right there. And the other side of that wire is a white wire that you can see right at the top there. So all in all, you can see there are a number of wires to follow. That white wire I showed you uh, gets power for one second when you turn the key, when everything is hooked up. All right, so I'm digging through this Jeep, which is a four liter swap, this YJ. And there's just absolute it's just a mess with wires and and wires that are are cut off and who knows what they do and I don't have a wiring diagram and I can't find a wiring diagram and there's there's things that are loose everywhere this is for the horn and this one's for the windshield washer fluid but there are wires and hoses and everything just loose everywhere it's a fucking mess come over here Let's just look up under this dash. Look at this. Just a mess of shit. I don't even know what that blue relay does. But, check this out. I think I may have found a potential source for the issue. Now, right by the driver's door, if you come in here, you can see a ground. If you look on the fuel pump wires, you'll see a black and yellow one. Or that's the color in my case. I know it's a different... Um, depending on the year of your YJ. But it grounds right here. And as you can see, that is not a great ground. 
I took it off. I thought it was in good shape because it looked good from the outside, but definitely, definitely not great. So I'm going to grind that up with a Dremel. Makes life easier. Put that back and then go get the fuel tank and, and see if it uh, turns the fuel pump on. Now that's just one ground, by the way. There's about a billion other grounds. Well, that didn't do anything. The fuel pump still doesn't prime or anything. Right now we're checking the fuse box. Uh, I think some of it's getting power and some of it isn't. So we're just about to see if it cranks with the starter relay. And if it does, we'll remove the starter relay and see if it cranks again. And if it does, then I don't know how this thing's been wired up. That's messed up. So this white wire here, I don't know what it does, but I attached a blue wire to it. And my dad on the other end has it attached to battery. And if I touch it to here, yeah, go ahead. You can hear it. You can see gas coming out there. So that works when you wire it directly to a battery. Now we just have to figure out why it doesn't work when it's normally hooked up. Well, it's official. The Rover One project is no more for the winter. Sad sight. A Jeep used to live here. Canadian made. Rover One meet new Mustang. Turn left a little bit. Jesus Christ. Nuts no, right, numb nuts. Sad day for the Rover. What do you have to say for yourself? Your car? That's right. Your car. I'm going to pull the fuel pump. Now, I don't know how much of this is stock. I don't really know. I can't find any diagrams. But I'm going to lose. Which doesn't mean anything because I fed power to this purple and yellow wire, which turns into green, which turns into white or whatever. And I fed power to that white wire and the fuel pump turned right on. And it was ground to here. But there's still this wire. And then there's still this wire here from the sending unit. I believe that's what that is. And this ground wire looks to be probably okay. So I want to take this fuel pump out, take a lot of pictures, and that way I'll know what fuel pump I need in the event that this thing actually goes and it stops working. The previous owner who did the four liter swap didn't tell me if he replaced the fuel tank, if this is a tank from a, in some, I don't know. I think it's just the stock YJ one. It's been, you know, modified. I think the way you take these off is there's a little tab there. You see that one there? If you scroll down, there's another one. And if you come over to this side, you can see barely one sticking out right there. And I think what you do is you take a chisel or a flat screwdriver or something flat and you pound these counterclockwise until that tab gets to the front of this tab. So until this tab here gets to here and then this locking inner ring should come out and then theoretically you should be able to just lift the whole thing up. I believe that's that and then this should come off. There we go. Make sure to clean this up before you put it back on, obviously. Ooh. And then this just comes right out. Look at that. This is the sending unit. The float. Who knows if that's working. It's connected on both ends. This in here has been... I don't know if that's custom or not. It very well might be. I'm not really sure. So this is the sending unit. That's the brown wire on the top. We've got a black here, which is ground, I suppose. And then an orange wire, which is power. So you have ground, power, and the sending unit. Those are the three wires. 
This is the fuel pump itself. Here's the screen. It's all in good shape. And so this two prong connector, this purple and yellow wire is actually the orange wire. And that connects to the white wire on the underside of the Jeep. This connector here, this three way connector here, um, is the sending unit and a ground which is grounded right to the top of this thing. So I'm gonna clean this all up and I'll give you guys a better look. But before we do all that, let's have a look inside the tank here. What the fuck is all that? Wow. It's very clean. It is very clean in here. Those are the filler and uh, breathe vent tubes. Almost dropped my phone in there. <laughs> Interesting. So that's bubbles. That's bubbling up. So whatever internal coating this is, it's breaking down eventually. You can see it peeling in all kinds of spots. That's super great. So it might be time to invest in a new tank, a plastic tank, you know, from a later YJ, or just a new tank altogether and a new pump and a, new, and a whole new system, really. So let's clean this off and then I'll go through this thing with you guys. And we'll see if this will better help us understand why the f it's not receiving power when everything's hooked up normally. I got the hole nice and clean. The shiny silver part is where the seal sits. This is the seal. It's actually in okay shape. It's still squishy and pliable. I managed to clean this thing up a little bit. Now let me explain how it works. I've been reading on forums on what the wires do, etc. And I couldn't really find much information other than... The tan slash brown wire, whatever you want to call it, is the sending unit wire, and the orange wire is the power wire. Now that leaves the black wire, and that's ground. If we follow these, okay, follow that wire, it goes up into here, which comes out of brown wire. And if you follow that connector, it's that tan brown wire there, whatever you want to call it. If this had an electric fuel pump, it would have the third wire. I guess that's how that works. And then you can see the two prongs inside. The black wire on this one, if you trace it back, goes to the ground right on top of the whole unit itself. So you can see the orange wire plugs into the fuel pump itself. That's this thing. And if you follow it up, it goes through the bottom up over top side for some reason turns into a purple yellow wire and then the the other uh, connector here has a green wire on it and then some point down the chain turns into a white wire so that's interesting that's the power wire and then the black wire that you can see here which for some reason is uh shrink wrapped goes up through here into here and that's the black wire now on the other connector the black wire just gets grounded to the skid plate so that's that so now we have all the wires here we have one two three and a couple grounds for some reason this thing isn't working when you cycle the key this wire here which i tested at the white wire which is along the frameway of the jeep uh, only gets 12 volts for half a second. I read that's normal. It's when the fuel pump primes the system, etc. But that's it. The fuel pump doesn't prime. It, you know, uh, it doesn't work, which is weird to me because when you connect power directly to it from the battery to that white wire, which is this purple and yellow wire, which is this orange wire, <laughs> it works fine. Now, I don't know how to test fuel pumps for, you know, their their power output. But when I had this thing in the tank with its low fuel level, it was shooting fuel 
out this line about three inches and then it was three inches. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad, but that's my situation. If your fuel gauge isn't working, I'm told that you should just get behind there and clean it. Clean the contacts, clean everything, look for the grounds, and then come back and check the sending unit itself. Because both these things, the sending unit and the fuel pump are expensive. A lot of people buy just a fuel pump, so they undo this hose, they just slip on the new pump and screen, good to go. Or if they're doing the sending unit, they just had to replace the whole little unit there. So I'm going to go over this one more time just to make sure all these connections are tight and then put the thing back together and then wait for my dad's mechanic friend to come over tomorrow and have a more closer look at this. In the meantime, while we wait for that guy, let's go make a fuel pump access panel in the floor of the YJ. So that way we never have to drop the tank ever again when we want to diagnose fuel pump issues.